So you have to list out all your favorite games. Hundreds of lots of thought, but there's no room to waste. Even if you ponder it so very long, someone on the internet will tell you you're wrong. Top 100 games. It's like I've heard this 10 hours. Top 10. Top 10 games. Top 10. Top of all time. Last 10 games. Anyways, welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Camilla Clegghorn. I'm Chris Yee. And I'm Roy Kennedy. And today we have our final 10 of our Top 100. I'm so excited. Yeah. These are the best games ever, and my list is 100% the best list. I don't know about that. How many of yours have I played? Um, some of them. Some of them were even on your list. Okay, so how many would you recommend? Um, you have three, played two four? of mine. Oh. You've played, I think, four of mine. Okay, all right. Maybe five. No, cool. three of mine. No, you've definitely played like five of mine, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's the best list. I don't know. Okay, well, I think Camilla might think her list is the best. I'm so excited about my list. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> she also might in. be fairly excitable. Hold it in. I mean, right. I'm... I'm Moderately excitable. These are a lot of games that I feel like mm -hmm. I've talked about for years now. Like a mm -hmm. lot of these are nothing like brand new has has peaked into my top ten yet. So mm. I don't know. Like I I I feel like I might undersell these because I feel like I've talked about these games a lot before. So I don't I don't want to sound less enthusiastic than Camilla. But I don't also. I also did not chug. I think chug, you always uh, sound less enthusiastic than Camilla. That's true. I need to, uh, uh, according to the chat, drink some Fanta and a couple yeah, Fagos. Yeah, what's up with the Fanta? That doesn't have caffeine in it. Why Fanta? Sugar. What am I missing? Maybe. It's lame. Oh, no. Gotta have 40? caffeine. Red dye forty. Caffeine. That's it. That's, poison. That's the Red poison. Red dye forty. My poison list has. Uh, I've I've talked about these games for years, like you said, like a lot of times. I really enjoy these games. I love talking about them, and I'm gonna talk about them some more. And it's excited tones as I can. Do you have any new games on your list, like in the last year or two? I think some of the stuff has switched around a little bit. Some of the stuff has been in the 20 before and pushed up because I said some of the stuff was normally the 10 and is now in the 20. Mm -hmm. So I used the pub meeple method this time and just picked which game I liked the most. And some things pushed other things out. And I mean, this is without me manipulating it as much as I normally would, being like, oh yeah, I really like that game has to be in the top 10. No, no, this is just me being like, I like this game more than that game. So the you did not your game. min max your list. I. He let the computer min max it for him. I, I, I min maxed it subconsciously. That is so much trust That's in a machine. That's so Roy. That's it's so not a machine, Roy. I clicked the button. A robot basically made your list. So you're a finger bot. Well. Well, there you it still go. ended up very similar to how it normally is. So. Let's start with number 10. What All right, my number 10 <laughs> is a game that's moved up for me uh, over the years. Actually, it's down one slot. This is a. <laughs> it's moved up over the years in a very opposite direction. <laughs> well, when I first played, I liked it a lot, but just the more and more and the more that I play it, I mean, it was nine before, it's ten now. Uh, I love teaching this game to people. It's Airlines Europe. Airlines Europe you is. Uh, this is a game that well, I think mm -hmm. the first game that we ever taught you. I think so. Yeah. I believe so. I love the idea of just stock, like like stock ownership, kind of, and some route work and stuff, and that's what this game is. It does it so well where there's just well, a lot of... very invested in this conversation. <laughs> he cares so much. He is so I care so much about, about airlines. He's like, airlines, 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 airlines stocks, <laughs> economics. It's yeah. a 10. This oh, is, a 10. Oh, this is Alan Moon's best game. If you like Ticket to Ride and you haven't tried this one yet, if you want something that's like a tad bit more involved than Ticket to Ride, this one is it. Uh, it has a lot of positive interaction between players, something mm. that I really, really love where you don't own a particular airline, anyone can build up the purple airline, or anyone can build up the gray airline, but also anyone can invest into them if they if they draw the right cards. There's a lot of moments of surprise, there's a lot of moments where people can steal the majority ownership and therefore the majority points at the scoring phases. 
This game is incredible. It really is. It's mm. so smooth. On a turn, you do one of four actions, and yet the game just always ramps up so much, and it's so interesting. So, my number 10, Airlines Europe. I dis choice. I despise memory games, and I despise... I, I dislike strongly, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, investment games and so this one I was really really leery of but I, I enjoy it so says so someone who sure. I don't think this game would speak to me at all it was it was enjoyable right yeah yeah because it's not so much memory like yours oh someone grabbed a couple of right. shares of orange but you're just sitting there thinking like okay they have some orange I'm not yeah you're not trying to memorize an exact sequence this isn't like heavy investment economic but it, it it's it, there it's like it touches it. game basically. right yeah yeah but it leans yeah, a little yeah. bit into that without Diving full in, so right. I I love yeah. it. Yeah, very nice. Did I mention I love it? Do you, do you love it? I love my number ten. Oh, it's Project Elite. I love it so much. Oh wow! So I'm sorry, this is ten. I know. I, I know. Be like oh, three. I know. Oh, it usually is, but no. All right. Project Elite is so intense and so much fun. Roy, you already you already talked about it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but in this game, you're on this alien planet, you know, whether you're, you've, you've crash landed on there, but you're the special team, force of team that's going out and trying to accomplish some sort of a, objective. And you, this game is just exciting, fun, tense, but at the same time, you feel so powerful. You know, mm -hmm. like that two minutes of a round, it's a real time in which you're dice chucking and moving and kind of trying to cooperate, but it's more like Screaming cooperation. <laughs> like, scream operation. It's scream real, operation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, real it's really intense. And then you take and um, and you have that moment after where you're like, oh, oh my gosh, look how many aliens I took out. Like I love that that pile beside you at the end, and you just feel like so cool. You know, it, it always seems every single round going into it, mm -hmm. it seems like okay, we are gonna have to min max. All of this stuff is going to have to go exactly correct, or else there's no way we can win. But then at the end of the round, when you see it, you're like, we are powerful. I love it. I like too that you have a bunch of different types of weapons and stuff like that. So like yes. sometimes it's like, oh, I have a sword, so I need them to be close to me, and you're just hacking and slashing guys down. And then sometimes you have like the sniper where you're like shooting far across the street, screen, right, but like yeah. or across the board, but you can hit them each time you do it. It's like, okay, that guy's too close. <gasps> that guy's too right. close. That sort of right. thing. You know? And then you're like, oh guys, you know, funnel them towards me, you know, because I'm up here on this tower, and you're sitting up there with a the sniper rifle on the tower, you know, and it's like yeah. funnel them to me. Choom, choom, choom. Yeah. yeah, when you hit on so like. Good. When you hit on like twos or higher, because you're on that turret, you're just yeah, like, like, bring them! Yes. There's a lot of memories that come from playing this oh, game. Yeah. Like, I've only Absolutely. played it twice, like I said, at six players both times, uh -huh. but I have such good, vivid memories from right. it. This is when I'd like to play more. Yeah, I want to know, Roy, during those two minutes, have you ever played this game sitting the entire game? Like, I've played it on the floor, so does oh, that really? count? Oh, wow. He I still stands kids on I, the floor, so. I have You're kneeling, never. I guess. That gives I you guess, like the yeah, over-the-top yeah, like, oh, feel. Oh, right, this is one of those games that as it goes, you just end up standing up, because so it's just so intense, and yeah, you're yeah. there, and it's just... And you have to reach the other side of the board sometimes. Yeah, of course, yeah. that's definitely that's, why I'm standing, why not because is, I'm, yeah. you know, like a two-year-old on speed. But, yes. <laughs> the <laughs> chat has no idea how excitable you are, so... Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, no idea. No idea. So, I really like this game. I'm always down to play. Yes, it is so good. Project Elite. And you've painted your copy, which looks awesome. I have. Oh, thank wow. you. That's yes, awesome. I have painted yeah, my copy. Really awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, my number 10. This is one of my favorite co op games. It is my favorite Lacerda game, and this is CO2. Ooh. It oh, was on your it list. It was on my See? list because it's good. Oh, I love how tight this co op game is. It is just, you're building these power plants and you're trying to do it efficiently so that you can be energy efficient and reduce all the coal and stuff that's destroying the world, and you're trying to survive basically the potential future energy apocalypse um so it's 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 very cool it's very tight i love the interaction i love the pieces uh, the building the power plant you like make a you put out a little plant and so build a water plant and then you build the foundation which is a different meeple and then the actual plant like fits on top in a really cool way yeah, like they, it just it pieces together it's lovely it's um, like intricate but at the same time, it just fits so simply. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just has a really cool it just, to it. Everything slides in piece. just right, and everybody can do it so you can all work on the power plants separately but together. I, oh, I love so much about this, and I really, really appreciate how tight it is. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, a lot of co-op games. You take your turns, and then bad stuff happens. And this is one of those games that does that. But the only thing that happens is that it just depends on how much CO2 comes out. So you know right. that... CO2 is going to come out, and you kind of have a range of 20 to 50. Um, and so you're just basically trying to mitigate that amount. But it's not like Pandemic, where you you have like a spot on the board that explodes, and you couldn't control There's nothing you could do about that. This game, you have so much control. 
and it's very tight and you look at the board at the beginning and you think how am I going to get all of this stuff done they just give mm. you so many objectives that you have to complete but then you do it and you feel great and the world survives and you make cute power plants I love it absolutely love it yeah. when people think like oh we like deluxe games and stuff or people think that when they don't appreciate like good production this is a game that's amazingly produced mm -hmm. but not over the top it doesn't come right. in a you know a kickstarter box pledge this mm -hmm. big or anything like that just it's gorgeous it's, it's right. beautiful it's wonderful you know, and it's still functional it doesn't like <laughs> get in its own way yeah you know what i mean exactly. like it's a very yeah. functional Gorgeous. Gorgeous, yeah, upgrade. Yeah. It's and not useful, upgraded, it's, it's purposeful. Yeah. yeah, and this yeah. is a game I'm really grateful that y'all taught me because I would not want to learn it from a rule book. <laughs> it oh, was sure. so yeah. much. Like, I hats off to y'all for doing that, and thanks for the teach because yeah. it was, yeah, it was quite a bit. Awesome. There's CO2 your compliment for the day. Thanks. Is my number 10. She's not kidding when she says per day. Per like, day. That's it. <laughs> we, have, we have a spreadsheet. My number 10 is a big storybook game. This oh. is from Ryan Lockett, and this is Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods is a gigantic sprawling game where you can kind of run in all sorts of different directions, and you're trying to find different totems and take your different ship crew and just go through this weird fantasy land that they've all been drug into and try to figure out what's going on and uh, awaken or put the gods to rest sort of thing. Um, but it's a very exciting game as you're going through all the stuff, trying to manage your ship and manage like the food that you have and keeping your guys healed and then fighting off bad guys that you run up against. I just love the story and the theme of this game, and it's just so charming, and I love the artwork and all the stuff that comes together in this. I feel like this will probably be replaced by the newer version if it's more streamlined mm -hmm. and easier to play. I'm really excited um, but that. I'm really excited about playing this game even more just because it's so cool just discovering all the stories and all the different things that this game has to uncover. I've played a couple different times and gone different directions of the map, but there's, I feel like, whole swaths of the map I haven't even explored yet. So, and then if you add it on dungeons and things like that on top of it, it's just yeah. all sorts of things to check out and explore in Sleeping Gods, and yeah. that's why I really enjoy it. I feel like Chris and I missed, like, the moment for this game. Like, mm. we played mm -hmm. the little sample version, and then everybody took it home and played it, and we mm. didn't have a copy, and I was like, oh, no, and then we just never, like, picked it back up. Right. Yeah. I feel like we should. I played it here, I played it solo, I played it with my friend Ryan for my birthday a bunch, like, mm -hmm. I played it with several different groups and it's been a lot of fun so yeah, what, I, or is it, so what no. I'm looking forward to is in the new game found campaign they just did they have their box they're making a printed version of the one to two player right. mm -hmm. primeval peril primeval, mm. yeah. I think nice. that's something we'll probably play I think through because mm -hmm. at that two will. players it sounds more manageable there you go <laughs> right yeah stuff. I think that's so what I need a bunch a bunch of players I did solo and ran all the stuff so I've heard it's not bad I just wild. think that's yeah not really my play it's style just, but this it's is just one abilities I, I need to play this more I, I didn't consider it for my list because I feel like I've only explored such a small amount that it's like mm. I really can't even speak to it. it's like oh, I can tell I'm really gonna like this but not mm. enough to really have a firm opinion on it other than I really like it you know yeah. mm -hmm. so so it's one that unfortunately it will probably be on the list in years to come once I play it more into it but yeah but yeah my number yeah. 10 sleeping gods <laughs> should blast him all right number nine for me this is one that surprised me how much has moved up over the over time this is one i've loved for a long 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 time it used to be number 33 even it's jumped up to nine it's las vegas uh, particularly Las Vegas Royale is the newest printing of it, and I know that you really didn't like it. I did not, but I finished it. You did. You did, did not there rage no quit. Rage I finished it very game. calmly. Yeah. Yes, externally. This game is so much fun. This is to me, uh, it's it's so approachable that if you have family or friends who have only played Yahtzee and they're like, oh, teach me one of your board games, you know, one of your foreign kooky board games, and you want something that is strategic and has good decisions, but it's not any more complicated really than Yahtzee, Las Vegas is so good. Part of the reason it's so high on my list is one, I absolutely love it, but two, it's so teachable that I've taught it a lot. You roll dice, and then you pick all the numbers of one of the faces, like all of the threes, and you put them on the number three casino, and you just want to have majorities. There's also a great twist in the rules where if, uh, if at the end, as we're going through the majorities and getting the biggest payouts, I have four number threes and Roy has four number threes, our ties get eliminated off the board and Wendy could win the big payout with yes. a single die. It's so fun! This, it has so many moments of excitement. It has so many great things. This new printing, this new edition of it, Royale, has a bunch of mini games, which is what you see around the outside. I like the mini games. Seldom do you take a, a, a very simple game and add more stuff to it, and it makes it better. This is one of the few cases where I think the little additions, the extra modules, actually makes the game even more fun. A little mm. bit more chaotic, and so great. 
That's my number nine, Las Vegas Royale. Well, I think what those modules do is they make it so that the lower spaces usually have less cash money you can you can earn, and so it just gives you something. It gives you a reason to go there, basically. Yeah. Because you have a chance to win a mini game, maybe. Yeah, but any um, printing you get to Las Vegas, stupendous game. Like I just got called out in the comments. Finished it. It's not a legacy. It was for me. <laughs> <laughs> I finished it. I'm done. <laughs> we talked this to you before. I knew more. Right. You know, we yeah. knew, yeah. knew yeah. your I mean, taste that, better. And that's fine. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't terrible. Right. Yeah. Let's be clear. It was not your worst. When we, when you review games for a living, you play a lot of games that you're like, I would like this to be right. done now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Do we have enough to review it? At least Cut. not a three-hour one. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> So awesome. Good, good. All right. My number nine is very different than Project Elite, probably the complete other side of the spectrum. It is Cascadia. It is a very Ooh, calming wow. game. This is another one of my entries for just the calming, like, at the end of the game, I'm just happy. This is a happy game, my happy little place in my animals and arranging them in certain patterns in order to try and maximize the points and, and meet certain, I guess they're not goal cards, but certain scoring objectives and maximizing yeah. those. And so it's a drafting. I really like open draft mechanism. And so you're drafting a tile and on that tile it has a landscape and may, and it, it's associated also with a animal that you have to place. And so you're trying to, Again, manage your different biomes, you know, and making sure that you have the right landscapes together um, in order to maximize. You really want the largest uh, lands together because you score your biggest one mm. and um, of, of each kind, your biggest area of each kind. And so it's just, it's just simple. It's a couple rules, but you can really puzzle out and try to maximize this, um, but also some tough decisions where it's like, oh, I've been waiting for that animal and I know he's going for it too, so do I get that? But then that doesn't work with my landscape. And so it has a good decision space for the puzzle nature, but at the end of the day, it also doesn't have choices that are just going to completely put you out of scoring. You know, and I yeah. really like this for that, 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 there's not really a bad move, there's just more efficient moves. And I think that is just a really low barrier to entry, which keeps this really, it's puzzly but low key and at the same time. Yeah, there's a sense of openness to it. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. That it's not like I have to puzzle this so much or I'm just not even in the running, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I like that it comes with a family variant, so I can play with my, my son, but all, honestly, my most played is the solo. I think this has a great solo ad adaptation. It's really quick okay. to set up, it's, and it's, it's just relaxing. I, mm -hmm. I love Cascadia. I, I, play it a lot and still don't think I get it to the table enough, you know, so I, I really yeah. enjoy it. Well, I should try it solo then, because mm -hmm. I love the idea of packet drafting, or, or whatever you want to call it, where there's multiple yeah. things, you draft one grouping of things, right. and that's what makes this game so enticing. Right. Yeah, the solo is mm -hmm. really simple, like the last, the last, um, Couple, you know, it's, it's after you take your turn and then the last one falls off. So mm. you also know what's going to be leaving, so it kind of might sway your decision making as well. It's like, okay, I want that and this, but that'll be there one more round. This one won't, and so you take that. And so it's just a different way to think, I think, as well. Cool. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. Nice. All right, my number time. My number time. My number Ooh. nine is Gizmos. Oh, I love this oh, game so much. There it is. This is the ultimate Phil Walker Harding game of awesomeness. <laughs> love it to my core. Um, it's funny because the whole marble thing, like I know people love it because of the marbles, but I could take or break the marbles. I think they're cool. Take or um, break them. <laughs> break them 100%. <laughs> Dead marbles, buried out back. Um, like I think that they're cool, but for me it is the gizmos part of this game mm -hmm. that sells it. Mm -hmm. It is the feeling of I do this one little thing and because I set up my cards right, I get to do seven other things in a row, firing them all off, lets me buy this awesome card that just improves my engine even more. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just, oh, I love so much about this game. And then there's some cards that just give you big end game scoring if you can set everything just right. It's absolutely lovely, absolutely wonderful. I know you talked about it, mm -hmm. um, it. already, and I already kind of gushed over it. But yeah. Four way it's, crossover, it's though. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Is, that, is that our yeah. only oh, four way? Is. Well, so no, the one that I've noticed, I think so. but I don't think so. we'll see. Mm. I yeah. believe so, yeah. yeah. Chat will let us know. There, there you go. go. Do, the, do the numbers for us. <laughs> we like them. Gizmos. Gizmos, number nine. All right, my number nine is a game that's been talked about by several people here, um, and this is a game set in the Dune universe. This is Dune Imperium. Bam, 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 bam. Worker placement game, but also with uh, with deck building, and then a bit of area control, moving up tracks and things like that. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy the way this game comes together and how tight the decisions you have to make are of like, 
you have to kind of be flexible with your plan a little bit of if somebody takes a space, maybe you push that off to another turn or like try to figure out the order you want to go after things. And then winning those combats is a really big deal, especially later in the game when they're worth actual points. You're only playing to 10 points. So if you can get two points off of a card, that's a ridiculous amount of like the percentage of what you need to win the game. And then trying to vie for all the influence of all the different faction. I love that there's, it's a very mechanical game, but they've managed to fit in and weave in a little bit of that Dune lore and you feel like you're fighting over spice and you feel like you're you're trying to like ha like utilize your faction's ability here and there and it's just a lot of fun um and i've had a lot of success playing this game and i played it a ton a ton at dice star west i think i played it like three times oh dang. it was a lot of fun so i really enjoy uh dune imperium and i mean a lot of people really enjoy it too so this is a game that has something for everyone right like yeah. if you like combat it's there yeah that's true. I feel bad now. No, I mean, <laughs> no. Everyone that matters likes this So game. I think, <laughs> am I the only one here that didn't have it on their top 100? Like, Absolutely. I know I have it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in, the uh, office, in, the in the office? I don't yes. believe. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think I might be. Yes. 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 I think I might be the only person. Choice, so. This so one is the only person in the gaming community currently. I am definitely wrong in this moment. No, but I like a lot about this game. I think it's honestly just the deck building that frustrates me. And it's surprising to me. It's crazy. I love the deck building. This game. It's weird because and I utilized it to earn tons of points. I'm actually okay with the combat in this game because it's very clean cut and dry. Right. Like I know you have the cards that you can pull out, and yeah. I'm fine with that. Um, but the combat is not the thing that upsets me about this game. But you don't it's dislike. It's, you it's don't strange dislike that you this don't game, like though. the. No, I don't you dislike just, it. You don't like the deck building because it's not as like you're not building up a huge deck and calling it a ton, or you have to be very like every. Point. Thanks. I. I was, it's I was, just, it's literally just that those cards number. determine my actions. Like that's. That's the thing that frustrates me is that I want to be able to do what I can't do because but that's I didn't the entire draw game. the right cards. Play better, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to work a placement game. No, but what I was going to say no, is I hate that. There's a million worker placement. A million. Well, that's what I say, but there's the, a million worker placement Here's the thing. Here's the thing. She doesn't hate the game. So what I was going to say is like this game has something for everybody. You like combat? It has that. You like worker placement? It has that. But yet at the She's same... She's saying the, the rub but, that, she, right, that, but, that but, annoys her is when she can't place exactly where she wants to place because of the card she has in her hand. Okay, which but again, seems like a my point is issue. this game has something for everyone. <laughs> Fourth time's a charm. Get good. Camilla's on my side. This I rarely happen. You. Right. No, it has something for everybody, but a mm -hmm. lot of games that we see that have that just end up getting washed out or underdeveloped mm -hmm. or doesn't just don't work. They have a or little bit like too much, right? Give you right, or they're stuff. just clunky. And I think I'm, that's what really makes this game so good is it has all these different things, so somebody can mm -hmm. latch onto one. So someone that is even really frustrated by one part of it can still say it's a good game. I'm and a there's huge things I like fan about it. of uh, Direwolf and and Paul Denton or whatever the designer of this game. I really rank Clank extremely highly as well. Like mm -hmm. I love those games. So this one just is a, is a huge success for me. So my number nine. Dune Imperium. <laughs> Dune. 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 Okay, my Dune, number eight Dune, Dune, Dune. is uh, oh, my number eight. Oh, I love this game so much. Number it's Teotihuacan. Your number eight. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite by far of the T game line. This is uh, this is oh my gosh. This is my favorite Mesoamerican game and all that. Just, ah! Mm -hmm. Take two. My number eight is Teotihuacan. I really love this game mm -hmm. so much. It is a fantastic dice manipulation game. You are moving your dice around to the outside and taking the different actions. Uh, Wendy already talked about this one where you have reasons to group your dice together to get stronger actions. You have reasons to keep your dice further apart. You have reasons to do everything. You want to lock them onto these little side actions to earn bonuses and move up the tracks because every track gives you bonuses as you move up them. You get huge bonuses if you make it to the top of the tracks. You have reason to build up the pyramid. You have reason to say, other people are building up the pyramid. I'll just do other stuff. Everything about this game is oh. so great. And even though it's very procedural and a complex game, I find that for whatever reason, it just clicks with me very easily. And uh, I've played this a lot, a lot. Uh, played a lot on Board Game Arena too, so online, in person, however, I just, I just really like this one. Teotihuacan, City of Gods, my number eight. Good stuff. How was good, that? How was that for stuff. my excitement? That was good. It's very exciting. Okay, yeah. third, t third take. All right, third my take. number eight is Teotihuacan. Go for it. 
Um, all right. My number eight, we're back to an exciting game, and this is, um, I hope they're all exciting. <laughs> they're they, well, they some are relaxing. <laughs> some are, you know, I'm just saying Chris was not, I understand. No, 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 I was saying, like, my last one was exciting, but it's like my relaxing one, you know, and this mm -hmm. is more like, yes, mm -hmm. exciting one again. My number, whatever, we're on, eight. eight. It's Chronicles of, what? Are there monsters? Chronicles of Crime 2400. Oh, there I want to play this one. It's so good, Roy, so good. <laughs> um, so again, I've had a couple of the Chronicles of Crime on here already. This is my third one, but this is wow. definitely the one that's the highest for me. I love the um, cybernetic feel of this one, you know, and how you go mm. into the cyberspace and meet these faceless characters and trying to figure out who they are in the real world versus their avatars that you're meeting. And it just it layers, it's a whole new layer of like unknowns wow. that you have to figure out. And it's like, hey, well, they're helpful in the cyberspace, but this person's really not helpful here. Maybe it's the same person and they're actually, mm. um, you know, giving us clues. It, it's just, it's so neat. And then you have the Raven who can go and find information for you. I mean, a cyber raven. That sounds really Why cool. Why is that not a thing, like, in real life? Like, in, I, I still want one. I'm still petitioning to get a cyber raven. I think most cybertronic things are still not real at the moment. Well, that is a huge disappointment in life, and mm. somebody needs, smarter than me needs to make that happen. I bet also, that if you went to Disney World, there's probably a cyber raven somewhere there. Also, make a consumer jetpack. It's 2022. I should be flying right. to work. <laughs> I, I'm sorely disappointed with my life thus far. It's dangerous, man. It's um, dangerous. Too much humidity here. I don't want to fly to work. I want an air you conditioned want the car. Clog and then your airplanes you're can in the have swamp. right, right. Mm. Become one with the swamp. A jetpack's not gonna have its own air conditioning. You're going so fast. You're going have so you ever been on a motorcycle? It's motorcycles so don't have heat. them either, but you can. You don't get. You know what like, happens when you land really fast on a motorcycle? It's called crashing. No, it's <laughs> really hot and sweaty on a motorcycle <laughs> at every stoplight. Yeah, you just don't stop for stop signs. Because <laughs> you're not, that's cool. you're not riding your motorcycle in the cool, cool sky. That's right. Mm. See? Anyway. Yes, a sky motorcycle mm. and a sky cyber, cycle. cyber, a sky cycle with a cyber raven. <laughs> There's those motorcycle jackets where you like get it wet on the inside and then it's breathable, so that it pulls yeah, it's you off as you. Like the, like no. the dunes like suits Chris's that you can one. get the water out of? No? There you go. My well, number eight, it's Chronicles of Crime 2400. It's great. I'll come back to Dune with you, Roy. Yes. Yeah, why don't we have personal air conditioners? That's what I really want. The Dune must like flow. Not, not like those like hyper fans that are really loud, but like a real personal air conditioner. Like I just like push a button and I have a bubble of beautiful air around me. Personal I always have a air bubble. conditioner. Don't touch me. All right, Wendy, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what number are we on? Number what? Eight. eight? My number eight is, ooh, this is, I think, a three-way crossover. I think it's also on Tom's list and the people's list and maybe someone else's. I'm not sure. But this is Dominion. Oh, this, this is, is on my crossover, too. The ultimate, the ultimate first deck builder. I, I love how mechanically sound this is. That's great praise coming from me. Um, this is this is the original Almost deck spat builder that game. game. All over me. <laughs> she she loves it. This is the original deck builder game, and it is all about tightness. So you have one action so that, um, that you can play. That you then have your buy phase. You then have your money. You know your money phase or whatever, and then you redraw. Like it's very clean cut, and the cards let you do everything. They let you draw more. They let you take more actions. They let you buy more. They let you, you know, your money can do fun things. And so I love how every expansion has kind of a theme or a new mechanical cards, new things that go on. And it's just been so fun over the last decade just discovering all the great stuff that can come out. Um, we started with Intrigue and Regular Dominion, Chris's brother had it, and then we just kind of moved on from there. And it it just, it to me, it is the celebration of deck building games. Like, it, it's where it started, but also, if you really want to understand the mechanics behind it, this is all about the mechanics. So I love Dominion. Also, Camilla keeps laughing at me. The celebration no, of deck no, building. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay. Dominion's okay. awesome. Yeah. It, I it agree. <laughs> awesome. So for me, my number eight is a space game. Shock. This I is Cosmic. I thought didn't games? like space. This is Cosmic Encounter. I love Cosmic Encounter. There are massive amounts of different aliens. You're all racing to try to get five colonies on other players' planets, but you're doing that through setting up different combats. You have encounters with different players, and sometimes you can negotiate to win those encounters. Sometimes you can have people ally with you on your side and add their strength to your side of the battle. If you're on the attacking side, you get to colonize the planet as well. If you're on the defending side, you get to draw a bunch more cards, so that way your hand isn't empty, so you can maybe win combats on your turn. There's lots of interesting, crazy, zany things that happen in this game. 
This is another one of the games that was credited with uh, helping inspire Magic the Gathering. It's just with those cosmic zaps and blasting things back and forth and all sorts of crazy powers that happen in this game. There's a massive amount of aliens in Cosmic Encounter, and it's just crazy to see the combos and things that happen. I have so many great stories from playing Cosmic Encounter, from a game where everybody was allied against me, to, and they, we all need one point to win. Everybody was allied against me, and they were all attacking me. They're like, oh, we're all going to tie and win and beat you, Roy. But I had some sort of card that allowed me to, like, if people are attacking, me, I can move one of my ships to someone else's colony, and I got to five before everybody else. So I'm like, ah, oh, oh, take that. We had a game with Mike where he needed all of his ships to die, and and it's like, oh no, he's about to, <laughs> he's about to have his last ship die. Does somebody have Mobius tubes? And Chris is like, I got it, and they all came back. But he's like, and we cosmic zap that, and we still win. And they, there's just these crazy situations in this game that have happened so many times. There's a character in this that allows you to just actually cheat. It just says you're allowed to cheat. Oh, I hate that. You're character. allowed to take a card out of the discard pile. And I had a game where I just kept sneaking back the 40 card and kept using it over and over again and just kept mm -hmm. zapping everybody's stuff until you get caught and you get slapped on the wrist and like lose a bunch of stuff. So it's just a fun, interesting game with all sorts of zany things. It's a game you can't take too seriously, but I love the negotiation in it. It's been around since longer than I've been alive and it still has stood the test of time. So. Some t I still haven't played this one. It's it is, one it's crazy. I hear a lot about. It's definitely crazy. I think I'm um, scared I'm not gonna like it. Like. I'd be disappointed. Well, know? a lot of it is, it depends on the group you play with, and you have to come mm. in, in into it with the whole, like, negotiation backstabbing in mind, you know? There's a oh, little bit of that in it. Yeah. Is, which you, if, you could have one really terrible play, yeah. and then you could have a different game that is a very fun play. I know mm. negotiation's hard for me, because I don't like negotiation. Right. Yeah, but if you could be sneaky about it and just be like, no, because I don't want to give you anything. I would rather go down with the ship. You do have to ally anything. sometimes. Have I don't play zero cooperative. <laughs> I want to play cooperative. I'm like, no. I've played cooperative games with you before. They don't feel like cooperative games, so that makes what? sense. What? When we played Monara, everybody's like, "What's this cooperative, right? Why are they yelling at each other?" <laughs> no, I was encouraging you strongly. Mm, maybe at the end. Mm. Roy, strong do encouragement. Agree. That's a terrible Roy, idea. Don't mess it up. Did I mess it up? No, I didn't. No, you didn't. Anyway, see? Cooperative. It worked. Cosmic Encounter, my number eight. <laughs> Y'all are really stressing me All out right. here. All right. Number seven. I got that right. <laughs> my number seven was once number three. It probably would have fallen out of my ten, but I've been playing it more and more recently. We actually repurchased it. And it has stayed here in the top ten. It's Broom Service. Mm. Golly, I love this game. Oh, someone's going to trash on it, not me. <laughs> Take it, Wendy. <laughs> have you played this? No, I haven't. Okay, yeah. Well, like you have Wendy. no reason to trash on it, then. This game on. is... No leg to stand on. This game is one of my zaniest picks, probably, right? It's just... it's. It has so much that I could dislike about it, but I really love the whole thing. Basically, everybody has ten cards and picks four of them. And then it almost has a trick-taking game feel, where somebody is going to lay out a card. They choose to do it strong or weak. If you do it weak, you get the guaranteed action. If you do it strong, you're you're basically uh, betting that nobody else will take that strong action from you, and therefore not let you take the action. It is a strange dynamic, but it has got a, an adorable theme. It's basically Kiki's delivery service, where you're collecting potions, delivering them across the map. But this this incredibly unique card system is what makes the game so fun for me. Uh, I love that no matter what, at some point in the game, you will uh, just yell at this person at the table, why would you have picked that card? I, I bet that you didn't have it because you couldn't even use it, you know? And then, I don't, the, <sighs> for some reason, games like this should frustrate me to no end. And yet this one just sings. Mm. Every time I've taught it, everybody has had a great time, except for Wendy. Every time you don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it, this is the most single most divisive game that really we is. have probably played. It actually. really is. I wanted to like this game. It's very like Kiki Delivery Service ish looking, and it looks like a, a euro that you're moving around and delivering stuff, like pick up, you know, deliver that kind of stuff. Like I should like a lot of it, but I hate the card play so much. This choice, this idea of. I can't win the game unless I make strong actions, but if I choose that incorrectly, I get to do nothing, which then can mess up every single other action I'm taking that round. Because you pick your cards ahead of time and you plan your actions ahead of time. But then you and gamble so, you gamble where you can. Gambling and you're not everything, oh, yeah. it drives me insane. Like I want I don't I don't need perfect control, but I want more control than this. 
than I, this. I think this game gives ask. you enough control. What, but, you what know. this sounds like is like like Citadels when you keep taking the good card, but the good card keeps dying every time to the assassin. Is what it feels like. Is it kind of like that? It 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 you could feel like that when mm. you play, right? But it's it's just that idea. You do have more control though than in Citadels, where the assassins are like, oh, I killed the king, and you're like, oh, come on, well, what were the odds? You King's can good. read the, the king every time. You can read the state of the board. That's why I like the board moving around and delivering. Is it gives you information to work on as to whether you think someone is going to have that card in their hand, whether someone would, uh, even if they have it, play it as strong to steal the strong action from you, mm -hmm. um, because if whoever last plays a strong becomes the first player for the next round, first player is a terrible position to be in. There's so many good things to factor and weigh out with each decision that I think it gives you enough to work with. So anyway, I I have I can I can talk about this game far too long. That you can. My number seven favorite game of all time, Broom Service. You know what my favorite play of it was? Was actually the play where I sat on the sofa while you played with other people, and I heard you guys complaining about like those moments where someone doesn't get an action or like the big upsets, and I was like, ha ha ha. Why would you play the Weather Fairy? I'm reading ah, my book and I'm gone? loving it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, my number seven is a, another calming one, um, and it's a newer game, but I am absolutely charmed by this game. It's one that I've taken out multiple times just to even just look at the components oh, and wow. go through card by card. And I've read probably the entire um, companion book that comes with it that describes each card that's unique and gorgeous, and I'm talking about Meadow. Oh. I love this game. Um, I think I love the theme of this game. It really appeals to me. You're going through this meadow, but rather than having this overarching, I'm just taking in the meadow you're taking in the very specific parts of it you know down to like is it a grassland or is it a marshy area or is it a forest and then you're looking at the leaf and on the leaf there's a bug oh wait and now you know there's a a bird that eats the bug and then something else comes in for the bird you know so you see this whole um, food chain kind of thing you know but it's, it's again it's the very microcosms kind of of the of the ecosystem here that you're looking into and I love it and you're building but at the same time, it has really solid mechanics where you're you're actually trying to match up symbols and get the right symbols at the right time to be able to play a card in order to multiply your scoring or go over to this other camping board so you have the right symbols at the right time to claim claim the points there. I love the card selection in this, you know, um, of the of the grid that you have. You know, I love my grids. People learned anything through this. I love my grids. So you have your grids and the fence post out there, which allow you to take so many cards in. And it is just so pleasing. I love that this game, it has all that open information out there, but it also, it, it you see the game evolve as you play through it. You know, so whether it's the grid that's flushing out, it's your own meadow down here that, that's flushing out, you might play a card, just use a symbol once to get a more powerful card out. And so it just, it just evolves as you go through it. And it's pleasing. I'm, I'm absolutely distracted 70% of this game by the artwork and by the theme and just kind of like making my little stories in my head. And then scoring's just fun, you know? Like, I just I just smile through this whole game. I really, really love it. And I'm so excited about the rivers. Yeah, the Down River Down expansion. River, that's it, yeah, oh, Down nice. River. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about that expansion. It's uh, absolutely just a insta-buy for me when it comes out this fall. That otter. Oh cover. my gosh, that otter <laughs> is adorable. So, Yoke. check it out, yes. But Meadow, my number? Seven. 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 Oh, mm. good stuff. All right, my number seven is, I love how I like keep turning off my phone just in time for this. Um, mm. This is one of my more thematic games. This is Gloomhaven, and I'm counting wow. Jaws the Lion, not Jaws the Lion, all forms of Gloomhaven interestingness. Wendy has um, Gloomhaven highest on her list out of all of us. I'm <laughs> pretty surprised yeah, you know, about that. I, I've just had so many good experiences with Gloomhaven over the last couple years. Like, we found it. We found the big box of Gloomhaven used mm -hmm. for $40. That's amazing. It was a oh, wow. steal. Yeah. Yeah. All it was missing was just a couple of, like, the level one item cards. And so, mm -hmm. like, that was not a big deal at all. So just level up. It was It was great. Yeah. Yeah, get totally. good, Scrub. Get good. Easy. Don't need them. Easy peasy. No, I I really enjoy a lot more mechanisms a lot more mechanisms when they're cooperative. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those that, you know, you are fighting, you are doing stuff on the map and whatever, and you're flipping over cards. And it's very luck-based whether or not you get to fight and attack somebody. But because it's cooperative, I enjoy it so much more. And because the card play is very intriguing, mm -hmm. this idea of you have to do a top action of one card and a bottom action of another card, you pick two cards for a round, you play them, and that the numbers on them determine what speed you go, what mm -hmm. your initiative is. Like, there's just a lot of really cool stuff there. 
And I feel like this gets me the closest to D&D, which I do really enjoy. Um, it's got a story. You've got choices you get to make between games. There's just a lot going on there. You get to level up and really make your person what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And they all have special powers. They're all unique. They're all great. And so there's just so much about this game that really it's, it's probably my favorite thematic dudes on a map game. Well, okay, I guess it is. It's my top mm. ten. It's yeah. my most favorite, like dudes on the map, um, fighting Tactical game. Tactical skirmish way. fighting yeah. game, however you want to yeah, call it. Yeah, however you want to yeah. call that. Like, I really, really like it a lot. It's good stuff. So, Gloomhaven is my number seven. My number seven is a game in the commands and color system, and this is Battle Lore Second Edition. So this is a game that I have played a ton of, and I have everything for the game. I really enjoy the fact of like, you have this, you play different factions, you basically are recruiting your army, basically you, you have like a point by system of, you get to pick the guys that are actually on your team, but then you secretly set up where they are. There's different objectives in the middle of the board, depending on the scenario you're playing, with different terrain types that you can go through and things like that, but you're trying to fight over and buy over those different points. And there's other ways of scoring depending on how you set up the game, because each player selects like a card and that makes the map so like one player has one half the map the other player has the other half the map they put that together and there's also scoring on those cards um and it's just very interesting as the game comes together it uses very much like the commands and colors style like movement like you can either move units in the left or the right or the center and based on the cards you play you can actually play those out there's also lore cards that have magic abilities that allow you to do all sorts of different stuff and mitigate a lot of your dice rolls allow you to get extra special abilities for your different units it's a blast to play i love playing it i love the undead faction in this you can play with them and i love just having all of the different things to, to put together in this game I, it's just a blast being able to go up against another player and take take each other out i played this game also with like a i made like a epic battle lore version of it where I play with like eight players um, oh, and, wow. we, and there's there's basically three on each side and they're each controlling one of the flanks and you have a commander behind that plays the actual command cards and they give the actions to those players those players <laughs> choose who they're actually attacking with and the commander's also playing the lore cards to help buff out the different oh, stuff man. and I played that at the retreat a couple years ago um, with Sam as the other commander and it's just mm. so amazing and such a blast to play and, did you call and, that operation over lore it's, it's very much it is there's epic bad lore, which is the same thing as Overlord in Memoir 44. But this is the one I love. Um, I love the fantasy theme. I love the crazy giant monsters. I love tons and tons of special powers on all the characters. It's a blast, and I've had such a good time playing it. And that is Bad Lore Second Edition. <laughs> All right, number six. This is uh, this is this one was on Wendy's list. This is apparently my new favorite Alexander Fister game. I thought it would be Broom Service, but number six is Mombasa. This is a game that Wendy's already spoken about. I won't talk about it too long, but the idea of trying to control uh, interest investment in the different four companies around the map, moving their presence across the map in order to uh, make each share that you own of it worth more. Uh, much like Airlines Europe, this is like a beefier kind of that interaction points of Airlines Europe. This has uh, some similarities, but there's also kind of a deck building thing going on. There's a very clever and unique card system going on. Everything about this game, I absolutely love. It's You're playing cards, and then also in the middle of that, you could do worker placement actions if you want. If you have majorities, and once you play cards, then it reduces where you can place your workers and everything. It's amazing. I'm really looking forward to the to the re-theming of it because they're re-theming it, but they're also going to put in some more content. So uh, I would like to see what you know what's going to be happening with that in the future, of course. And I adore this game. It's, it's my number six, stuff. Mombasa. And there's tracks. There's Ooh, tracks. Tracks. Oh, there's so like many tracks. 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 There's four to be exact. But they're double sided. It's <gasps> double sided. Shadow tracks. tracks. Shadow tracks. Nice. That's like uh, that's Gandalf's horse. Yeah, he yeah, rides the tracks. shadow tracks into battle. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm gonna drop in some puns for you today, Roy. Mm. I love it. Roy's all over it. I'll all only acknowledge fifty percent of them. <laughs> 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 all right, my number six is another gruesome a game. I guess I love it for it's it's just gritty nastiness. Um, Claustrophobia 1643. This is a two-player game in which one of you are playing these hellhound demon creatures and the others are humans. It's scenario-based and so depending on the scenario, um, 
the humans will have different objectives that they're trying to to accomplish and the baddies the the demons and hellhounds are trying to thwart that right and so um i played a couple different times and what i really like about this is it is so scenario unique and specific um as well as it has the the luck and and dice mitigation that I, that I really like as well. Um, so as you're going through the scenarios I played, you you are going through the, I guess underbelly, you know the, yeah underbelly. We'll say caves. I, I don't know hell. Um, and you are discovering yeah the down below, and you are going through and discovering. But you don't know again scenario based what you're trying to do. In one of them, you were trying to find the exit to get out, and so you had to explore in a certain direction. The, the, you being the humans had to explore in a specific direction, and so your strategy there was kind of you have to stick together so you can explore as many as possible because it has to be one after the other. Um, in another scenario, you were trying to just explore out the cave in order to find this one tile that you knew kind of subterra subterra wise where you knew it was at the bottom so you're kind of all splitting up and trying to do um, but you have three dice that you're gonna roll on your turn and then you have your little tableau player board and you have multiple different actions and you use those dice in order to allocate to different actions some of them have to have a certain number like you have to have over seven but the dice only go up to three so you're planning ahead and, and um, banking them for later um, and so it's like, all right, am I going to summon this hellhound or am I going to use these guys that I already have out and have them do smaller little attacks? And so it's just really interesting, I think, decisions on how to use what you have and what to bank for later in order to either thwart or accomplish this long-term goal. And it's just really interesting push and pull. Excellent uh, decision space, fantastically nasty miniatures, which you know I'm all about. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I really, really enjoy getting this to the table. So, yes, this is mine. Six, claustrophobia, 1643. I always forget the year. 1643. And you get with the years. I'm I don't like, know, it, 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 it's something, something. Don't Hold. say that to a train game person, though. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the year matters. It is the whole game. Um, my number seven is Paladins of the West Kingdom. I really love the West Kingdom games. I love the North Sea games. I'm super excited about the future of all of this. Um, the, anyways, I don't, what's the, the West Tigers? The South West Tigers. Tigers. I was like Tigers, Tigers of Euphrates, but it's not South that. Tigers. South Tigers, South Tigers. thank yeah. you, okay. Um, yeah, but Paladins of the West Kingdom is just by far my absolute favorite. I really enjoy this idea of you have all of these workers of different colors and you need, a, you need specific colors for your action spaces to perform your actions but you can make them permanently cheaper by building up your green buildings and putting them on there. I just, I really like what's going on. I like that you cannot do too focused on one thing. You can't just make one thing really strong and powerful because you have to do a little bit of everything. You have to, because a certain type of action makes you move up on another action, another color of actions. So you're like, oh, well, I have really high red banners, so I can do this red action, but that red action doesn't increase my red banners, it increases my blue banners, so now I have to do a blue action to increase my black banners that then can increase my red banners. I, I really enjoy the balance of all that's going on there. That little mm -hmm. tableau in front of you is great. Um, plus there's spaces and objectives and stuff that come out every round, new things that you can do, um, and I just, oh, it's so good. Absolutely so good. I just always want to play it. It's wonderful. So that is my number six, Paladins of the West Kingdom. Mm. My number six. <laughs> That's the... Mm, <laughs> the I haven't played this game. Once again, my, right. my goal would play any of the Garfield games. Um, <laughs> as Mike Tyson, uh, yes, I'll I'll you watch Dash Roy Candidate. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, what was I going to say? Oh, my number six used to be my number one. Wow, like as of just last time you did this list? No, <laughs> but many, many moons yes. ago. I, it used to be my number one. I really enjoy Heroes of Land, Air and Sea. It is oh, a yeah, blast yeah. to play. I love this game. I love all the different factions. I love setting this up at like, it's just, it just can be a big epic 4X game. I love the follow action in this game. I really love like going out and exploring and flipping over the tiles and seeing what you're getting and trying to build your civilization the best you can with what's there. But then the gameplay of like trying to, you explore a bunch of areas Areas, but you have to like get towers on other people's areas and trying to like negotiate your way into like their area without them attacking you and sometimes you're winning so they're just gonna wreck you anyway um, it's a blast to play I've played it maybe more than anyone else I've played a massive amount of Heroes of Land Air and Sea I love this game I've taught it at retreats we played a gigantic seven player game of this at a retreat once um, wow. the reason it's dropped is because I, I feel like I've played this game a lot and I feel like I've seen almost everything that is to come out for it and I wish there was more expansions maybe I'm the only person that's asking for that I'm also playing a lot of other 4x games here recently wink wink but you know um, I really enjoy 
Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. It's a great game. It's a blast to play. And one I would still get back to the table for that fantasy 4X feel. I love the genre of game. And if you haven't played it and you like 4X games, definitely check it out. Yeah, this is definitely on my to playlist. I think we talked about it. I want you to teach me at some point. Yeah, it's a lot of right. fun. So definitely on my Heroes list. of Land, Air, and Sea. All right, I saw someone in the chat say that uh, uh, the the deduction and broom service is fifty percent luck. Yeah, right. I agree. Fifty-five Play better. percent. I agree with them entirely. <laughs> Play Everything better. About them. All right, my number five. Wendy's already discussed it. It was at one point my number one game. For many, 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 many years, it was my number one game. It's it was my number one game too. Is Dominion. Mm. I. It was. This is one of those picks that was really hard for me to not just auto slot into number one. Because I, this is the hobby game that got us into gaming. Mm -hmm. This is the game that we first just fell in love with and bought all the expansions and everything. It just is, I think, one of the most mechanically sound games that is out there because mm. you create the deck exactly how you want to. Uh, I, I really, really love it. And the fact that there's still new expansions coming out doing new things without overly complicating it shows that there is such, not just great... Uh, uh, decision space, but also so much design space mm. in the simple mechanism of deck building, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's pure and it's so fun. And I know it's not the the most exhilarating thematic experience for people, but that's not what I go into Dominion for. That's not what I go into this type of game for. You go into I, it for the c -c combos, right? You go into it for the artwork. Oh, baby. Especially the new Seaside uh, edition. Oh, they're making a second edition of the Seaside expansion. It made the cover worse. Great job, Rio Grande Games. It's like your second or third one on your list that that's happened. You're like, that's the old cover, because the new one's worse. That's what I get out of this year. Like, Actually, we'll just make it more cartoony, and it doesn't make it better. Now, well, to their credit, this is the second edition base box yes, cover, and it is good. infinitely better than the first one. It's pretty good. It's so much better than the first, like, goofy, like, knights, like, oh, it's very different up there. we have poles mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I love Dominion. Absolutely love it. Awesome. I concur. I agree. All right, my number five is another calming animal game. I Ooh. love my animals and my nature. It is Everdell. I am just always so charmed by this game. And the, I guess to steal your word here, just the tight worker placement aspect of it, you know? And um, there's very few places on the board to go to. And so it gets, if your spot gets taken, it, it's, you can have this over overarching strategy, but you also have to be very, um, um, I want to say tactile, and that's not the word. Tactical. See, Mike with the same again. Mm. <laughs> this is why I keep Mike around. It has nothing to do with him actually working the yeah, string no, and no, making that's everything right. awesome. Yeah, no, or, or throwing rock on symbols at me. Yes. No, but <laughs> um, yeah. So it's very tactical at the same time as you're having to constantly adapt, um, and as well as, as as someone else's tableau builds, you can use some of their actions sometimes if they have the open open sign. Um, it's just really pleasing. The cards are absolutely adorable. It's a a whole universe almost that you can get lost. Austin, you know, because it has enough connections to ours. It's just like a world within our world almost kind of feel. And I just, I'm absolutely charmed by this. I love the decisions that you have to make, the strategies that you can go with, but then also, again, just having to be malleable as you go and, and adaptive, you know, as different mm -hmm. things come out. I love Everdell. One of my favorite things about this game, having never played it actually, oh. and I feel like I should. You should. One I'm surprised we haven't. Like I just kind of don't that know is why. That's surprising we haven't actually to me. Played yeah. it. I've played it. Yeah. It's good. My favorite thing about this game though is that it put Andrew Bosley on the scene as an artist. I think this yes. was his big breakout game, mm. and I love his art. Right. It's beautiful. Mm. Right. Yeah. Because they because he is an artist like outside like he's an established artist and mm -hmm. other you know series, but in the board game community specifically, it brought this was him his into yeah. One, yeah right. So, I love it. I love Everdell. I want to play it. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Again. My number five is my most story-driven game. I love so much about this. This was my um, favorite game of 2021, and this is Destinies. This is, good this good is great. I thought this was going to be a four for crossover with you, Camilla. I was no, not again, same with Sleeping Gods, Mary. because I understand yeah. the scope of the game, and I can recognize I haven't but played you haven't enough. You know what, really, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I just, I don't feel like I can have a solid I, opinion yet, yeah. I was leery about putting new games on my top, especially my top 10. Wow. Um, but this, I have played all that there is so far of this game. That's crazy. And so I was like, I feel like I loved it. I could even play it some more, even though I've completed it all. Um, and 
I just, I love it. I don't know, I don't know how, what more to say except that there are so many wonderful decisions in this game. You get to move around and you're moving from tile, you're exploring, you're discovering, but there's so many great story moments. Mm -hmm. Once again, um, kind of like what I love about Gloomhaven is it, it, it has a lot of that D&D feel in the sense of I'm exploring a story and I get to make decisions and choices. Oh, I go to the blacksmith. Do I want to work for the blacksmith? See if I can earn some money? Do I want to, you know, hound him about some information? See if he can give me something? Do I want, Do want to, to rob bribe him, him yeah. or rob him? <laughs> or, like, there's so many great choices and decisions and they have real effects and the really things are happening. And like Chris had mentioned when he talked about it, you know, everyone's a little bit crossed, or maybe you said it, everyone's a little bit crossed over on their goals but you have completely different reasons why you want it. Right. You know, I want it for some evil purpose of like rising some evil god, whereas you want this ancient artifact so that you can, you know, shut down the Christians and take over the world. You know, I don't know. Well, you just have different reasons and different purposes. And I just, I think it's cool mm -hmm. and it's dark and it's gritty, um, but also there's fun fantasy behind it. And I love read. I'm, I'm a big reader. I love reading fantasy novels. Mm -hmm. And so like, there's some really good fantasy behind it. And it's just fabulous. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fabulous. Wendy has the most thematic top ten with Gloomhaven and, and I Destiny. I do, oh, I do. It's amazing. You got like animals and berries over here. Oh yeah, that's yeah. all. It was all that's, animals and berries. Highly thematic. Claustrophobia is basically a farming game. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's just missing yeah. multi-scales. So cows. much story and theme. <laughs> I love it. So that was my number five, Destinies. Um, my number five is a gigantic, gigantic, gigantic game. And this is a 4X game that I th I was actually surprised myself. I've ranked this even higher than Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea now, and this is Twilight Imperium. Ooh. Twilight yeah. Imperium is a Fourth? gigantic Fourth edition, of course. Um, I played a ton of third edition, but fourth edition just takes third edition and just makes it better and adds some cool new things into it. The problem is, like, every time I think about this game, I, it just is exciting. I love the gigantic scope. I love the objectives you're trying to complete and you're trying to negotiate with your neighbors and trying to talk your way into, like, figuring out how to complete your objectives. Like, I need this planet over here. I got to do this thing because reasons, you know? And you're trying to figure out and you're building up all those fleets and getting all these cool technologies. And I love the action system in this game where one person takes an action, they get the main part of the action, and then everybody else can pay to take a lesser part of that action normally. And Twilight Imperium is just a huge, gigantic, sprawling game. The problem is, it's hard to play this game and actually be a responsible adult. Like, I wish I had hours upon hours to play Twilight Imperium, and I get super jealous. There's a, a podcast, Space Cats, Peace Turtles, where they talk about all the tournaments they have and all the different gameplays and strategy mm -hmm. tips. They just play Twilight Imperium over and over again. And it's just like, man, I wish I had time to do that. Um, but it's it's a blast of a game, and it's definitely extremely enjoyable, and um, I enjoy playing Twilight Imperium. It's big. It's gigantic. Have you played this, Chris? I have, yeah. I have. I've played... even played it. That's crazy. I played like half a game. I didn't ever finish a whole game. <laughs> gotcha. No, we did. We did. Well, I mean, the guy had like eight points, and we were like at two. Well, like, you basically won. Like, got it, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we played two games at three or three or four players. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And they were both under four hours, actually. Oh. Well, you just said you didn't complete it. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the last two points, yeah. they're hard to get. No. Yeah. But no, I, I, I enjoy this game a lot. Kind of, kind of the same type of thing where, like, I, I think I could really like this game, but I haven't played it enough. Right, you know? it's so hard. I think it, I have to play really like so tech. hard. I thought the tech was really cool, yes. and if uh -huh. I could play the game of just tech, I would play that. If game. we played third edition, where oh, the tech is yeah. a complete mess, I would yeah, love to try fourth. Where the tech like is more linear and mm -hmm. just makes more sense. They streamline a lot of stuff, and then they made the expansion, which adds more stuff back in. But yeah, right. definitely. I mean, more to that point, there are games on my list that I've only played a couple times. But in those couple plays, it's like okay, but I've not that I've seen the whole game, as in there's nothing more to it. But it's like okay, you understand? I the see scope. how it works, right? Yeah, yeah the scope exactly. And so yes. Ones like Destinies and TI, mm -hmm. it's like no, it takes a little bit more to really understand. This is just oh, so much. Absolutely. Scope. Exactly. Sure. So it's not yeah. that you know, it's I've only played it once, so I don't have an opinion. I can have an opinion, but. Right. To make it on the list, on some some games are just harder oh, for to sure. justify. I agree. Right? For sure. Yeah, it's more of an ethereal. Do I get the game? I absolutely yeah, agree yeah. with what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So my number five, Twilight Imperium Fourth Edition.
I'd like to give thank you to the uh, to the shoutouts from Beer and Pretzels. Thank you, thank I mean you, the thank super. You. I'd like to give a shoutout to the jazz. super chats, Beer and Pretzels, and Matt. Super duper. Sorry, go ahead. Matt. Good luck I'm catching done. up because there's a lot of greatness going on, including mm -hmm. my number four, <gasps> which has already been mentioned by Wendy. Paladins of the West Kingdom. Mm. I I agree. This is the seminal work of Garfield games, and I would love to see. Uh, any of the games in the new trilogy supersede this one, but it's <laughs> they're going to have a hard time of doing it because I think that this game, in addition to everything that Wendy said, which is completely correct, this also is a game that is heavy and thinky and strategic while being smooth and easy to understand. This is one of those rules teachers where as my, my friend was teaching it to me for the mm. first time, I sat there I just kept thinking like, does this do that thing then? He would teach that exact part, and I said, mm -hmm. "Yes, this is the. It's one of the only times I've ever stood up and like and been excited. Cheer yourself on in a rules teach, yeah, because everything makes sense. The graphic design. I haven't even done that. There wow. you go. The graphic it's design impressive. is masterful. The, the points clear. of interaction, while they're fewer than in other games, are very critical. Uh, but there's also a lot of doing and manipulating, you know, things on your own board, which I think is so gratifying and satisfying." that this is one of my favorite games ever designed. And I, uh, like I said, that's a challenge to Garfield Games to somehow outdo this one. Paladins of the West Kingdom, my number four. Mm. Love it. Absolutely love it. All right. All right, my number 16 was Marvel Champions. And so now my number four is one that I could admit, I think I like the system of Marvel Champions better. Um, I think the deck building is, is quicker and more streamlined and things like that. But Arkham Horror, the living card game, just gets me with the theme. I it's love so it. Good. It's so good. And everything that Roy said about it, and we talked about how it feels like a board game with cards. Mm -hmm. You're building out a board, you're going location to location with your cards. So it's very simple. In that in that respect, you know, like componentry wise, um, but the artwork is just really good. It's really funny. Again, like Meadow, this is a game that I've taken out and I've just gone through cards. <laughs> like, just I'm just all looking at the tentacles cards. and gruesome monsters. And it's so good. And just weapons. the cover, like you're shooting off a tentacle and it explodes. Like, oh my gosh, I love it. I love the artwork in this. I love the flavor text in it on the bottom of the cards and that tying into the actual power of the card. Mm -hmm. I like. Uh, I think what this has over Marvel Champions for me as well is you are upgrading that those cards. So you deck build, mm. but then you're deck building throughout the campaign. So you're right. actually leveling up some cards and maintaining yeah. your deck. And it's it's you have a card that's the exact same card, right. but it's just a better version of that card right. that costs more experience. Yeah. Right, exactly. It costs more experience in order to get it, but then it's cheaper to play in game, or mm. maybe you can use it multiple times. Or it's just oh, it's so good. And so it's like the game has great decisions, the deck building has good decisions, but it also has this almost like phantasmagoric, you know, kind of nature to it. Your mm. your your deck is just changing as you go through, and I just. I cannot gush enough about this game. I'm always excited to play it. I'm always excited to just look at it, <laughs> you know, and just touch it. And I just, yeah, I, but, but I, how do you feel about that that tentacle token in the bag? The tentacle token. <sighs> I've had games of this where I've sat down to play solo and be like, all right, let's do this thing. And I go to do like a simple task and pull out the auto fail token. The tentacle and makes you automatically all, fail. fail. I'm like, yeah. well, that stinks. Right. And then I'll go yeah. to do something else solo, and I'll pull it cheat. out again and be like, really? And I'll throw it back in. I'll go do something else and pull it out again and be like, I, I give up this game. I'm going to start over. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. right. That's good on you. See, when I play solo and I, that happens the third time, something like that, I'm like, it feels actually <laughs> cheat. Like I'll, I'll forfeit the entire game. You can't he, like I you can't I don't fudge. Cheat, I quit. Roy you can't. Day. <laughs> you can't fudge the game if when you're playing solo, or else the whole integrity of the thing is wrong. But I'll say I just auto lose, apparently. forgetting. Who cares about integrity? It's a solo game. <laughs> <laughs> it's whatever you want it to be. You have to. You have to have integrity oh, in a solo oh, game. Oh, or, you what's the point? Oh, you oh, got oh, the oh. finger wag. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> no, yeah. So my number, whatever we're on now, four. My number four is Arkham Horror, the living card game. The card nice. game, which is living. There you I go. Love it. Yeah, like I said, this is one I really want to try. Oh, so good. I, I tried setting it up one time at a board game cafe. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? If it's not your own copy, you got to, like, okay, yeah. I got to unsort oh, yes. mm -hmm. and then resort all these cards. I got halfway through the rules. I'm sure it's a lot easier oh, yeah. being and I was like, taught the game no. for sure. I spent, yeah. I spent two and a half hours organizing this back down to, you know, something manageable in a board game cafe in Baltimore. So you're welcome, random citizen who played it after me. <laughs> oh, I, it's, it's destroyed <laughs> now. So. No. Right. Yeah. I, I organized it for you and then was like, two and a half hours later, babysitter's expensive going home. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I can play games or I can organize games. Right, yeah, yeah, it's it a great day. I might have fantastic. made a different <laughs> life decision. No. Um, my number four is Airlines Europe. Chris already talked about this. And honestly I'm I'm surprised it's a little bit higher on my list. But this 
This is a game, Chris explained, that is just, it's so cool with the stocks and how you don't own them, um, but you're, you're sharing with everybody else, but you're trying to get majorities. And so you're trying to own a lot of diverse stocks, but you also want to really focus in on some of the highest ones and hope to get majorities in that. Mm -hmm. um, you're building up your routes, like all the different routes on the board. And so some of the shorter routes and a fewer airplanes, um, once you make the connection, you get this big bonus towards that stock. But then there's also long routes that so you have tons of planes, and so you can really hit and really build it up by just mm -hmm. building so many planes. It's, it's wonderful. Really enjoy what's going on. And it's very sentimental as well. And I think that's honestly what makes it so high on my list is just the sentimentality. We play this all the time with Chris's stepdad. He loves airplanes. He's a driver for one of the airlines. Um, and he, he, this is the game we play. Like we don't play other games. This is the game we play when we go and visit. Um, we'll probably bring this to Vegas every time that we go back and visit. Yeah. Um, just hands down, like it, the, the amount of times it's gotten played, the amount of times it will get played will just continue forward. And I, I absolutely, I love what's going on. In, in all the different ways. In case anyone is curious, Wendy did not misspeak. My stepdad is not a pilot. He is a driver for like the shuttles for the <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so like shuttles around the VIPs and stuff like that. There yeah. you go. That's pretty cool. So that is my number four, Airlines Europe. Mm. My number four is a sandbox game. It is a space game, and this is Zaya Legends of a Drift System. How do you have a sandbox in space? Well, like the sand just like box. flow it's and a, create a cloud. A, you know, space, it's this There's low nebulous. on your list, There Roy. might be uh -huh. sand Almost like in the there. kinetic sand that sticks together. Regardless of all that, <laughs> I really enjoy Zaya. I think it's a blast. I mean, this is one of those games where you can kind of like go out there. You get to build your ship the way you want. You start off at the beginning of the game. You can decide whether you want to put more engines on your ship or whether you want to put more cargo holds on your ship or whether you want to put more guns on your ship. And you can play the game kind of the way you want to. And you kind of have to adapt your strategy as the game goes along. You're exploring, uncovering all these different sections of the drift system and you're trying to um, complete different missions. You're trying to do pick up and deliver with like different goods. Um, as you do exploration, you can get stuff that way as well. And you're upgrading your ships to get points. You are um, taking out NPC ships or blasting the other players to get points. There's a ton of different ways you can play this game and a ton of ways you can approach this game. The expansion made this game way better. It makes it like really, really good and just super solid. And there's so much stuff to explore. I just have a blast playing this game because as you play the game, you can just decide how you want to play it as you go along. It's like, oh, I could probably get more victory points doing this way. And then somebody opens up a thing over there and you're like, I really want to go over to that dead planet and get that artifact and take it back to the middle so that way I can get this extra tech. You know, there's a lot of really cool stuff and a lot of really cool decisions that you make in Zaya. And I just have so much fun playing it. So this it's is a game really that I actually expensive. taught y'all, right? So yeah. it's fun. Yeah, yeah it's solid. It's really still. solid. He's taught some people. Right. Well, well they're more not. important than you, clearly. It's it's a lot of fun. Anyway, Zaya, my number four. Good stuff. Oh, Chris, I'm 100% not kidding right now. <laughs> All right, number three. Ethnos. <gasps> wow, oh, that's so wow. high. That's awesome. I, I was wondering when that was coming. I've been waiting. I know. I, I honestly wow. forgot about it. I kind of... I thought that it was done. I was kind of surprised mm. that it was genuinely this high. But I have played this so much. I've played this more and more and more because it's such a fun game to teach. Mm. It's so versatile. Uh, I think it works well at two players. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a game that I will have a perfect amount of fun playing even the two-player there's some variations that you play to it, but the fact that it scales so well up to six, this is so easy to pull out at any game night, at a convention, uh, teaching five new people this game, and the fact that you are trying to make sets, you want large sets for points, you want to have the best you know, a, a race for the leader so that you get the best special abilities, the 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 uh, mix up ableness, mix right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mix up of of the Online. of the ten different factions that are in the box. You play with. Uh, six of them at a time, 12 in the box. There you go, you play with half. But the fact that any combination of this game makes it always feel ever so so significantly different, whether you have the skeletons in there or don't, whether you have the elves or the dwarves or the orcs or the wizards. Massive amounts of hobbits. Massive amounts of <laughs> hobbits. Multi-use hobbits, whatever oh. it is that you that you skeletons. could you like about this cows. game. Yeah, I, ah man, the... The area majority, the card combos and stuff. Or there's so many good ways of scoring points, and uh, I'll have the sideboards. I kind of have my fun like 
best mixes that I'll put together of the different factions when I'm teaching people. Mm -hmm. But honestly, any combination of them is super fun. So how could I not have this as one of my top games of all time if I played it and taught it and love it this much? <laughs> and you have certain factions that you like lean towards that you're like, if the mermaids are out or whatever, I'm going to always go for them. Um, I like the orcs have the little sideboard where you set collect by playing into the different regions. That's one of my favorites. I like using the merfolk when I'm teaching people because it's just a fun little sideboard thing. It's the you little know. track. Yeah, the little track on the side and you get to airdrop like a piece anywhere when you hit certain spaces on people love that. I feel like that's a, just a good dopamine hit in the middle of all the other stuff. So, yeah. You've said yourself before that the biggest drawback of the game is the look of it. You know, right? And I yeah. think the comments, they even just said, you know, it's like, whoa, Chris's picks are so old. Fun fact, this game That's isn't that not old. old. <laughs> it, just <laughs> looks that. it just looks that bad. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, I don't mind any of it besides the, like, bright colors, it's like the so gigantic generic. bright border and the gigantic, yeah. like, bright colored they pieces. There's I think yeah. if all they the fit, fit more of the theme, I actually, I mean, it's definitely old school art. Yeah. I'm definitely so old, disappointed old, old by the art. art. But I, I don't mind it. I, the, it it's fine for me for the art it, stuff. It's one of the worst cases of whiplash. If you look at that John Howe art cover, mm -hmm. and you're like, this is gonna be like a Lord of the Rings smashing game. And then you see that that board, and you're like, what is Somebody put candy all this? over the board. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Right, yeah. And then the, yeah, the huge bright borders around every card. It's almost like they went out of the way to make no part of the game. This is a game that could exactly actually part. use more beige. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> <That's so laughs> it would be better if it had more beige. I hate that you're right. Oh. oh, man. But yeah, if they could just like make a second edition of this and an expansion, I would be on Cloud 9. Yeah. I'd yeah. be on Cloud That'd be amazing. 14. I would, buy, I would buy a deluxe Ooh. edition of this where they had like actual like fantasy characters like that you put on the top or whatever your stack or something. That'd be, That'd be really cool. Oh, more plastic. Yes. That's what this thing is. Painted up. It yeah. needs no, to be painted I, I up. Not being I'm honestly surprised why this doesn't have like a bajillion expansions. It seems like it a big super so old, right? Is it, was it, what, 2018, 19? Uh, no, it's a few years oh. back. Oh, is it Get on it, okay. Palomore. Yeah. Do well, it. Anyway, speculation aside, I'm, right, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I wish there was an expansion. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, KM, for the super chat. Uh, I guess. And Ginger Scholar, no, my next one is not Adrenaline because it's on the Ketchup Palooza. I've not played it. My number three is the one that I think I am probably going to be, this is going to be my champion game, that like it's never going to be on anyone else's list, but I love it, and I want to teach it all the time and play it all the time, and I just, I, I love it. Eco's First Continent. This is uh, John DeClaire. It is, wow. I know, I know mm. you dislike this game. I find very it actively. fabulous. I know, and I found that it's very divisive. divisive yeah. Right, and it, I think a lot of people, the, the the meanness, the way people can mess up, I really don't think you would like this. Have you played I it? I played it, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not okay. Fan. Yes, because I don't think so. <laughs> because people mess up your system, right? And that's not something I usually like. I like my little happy tableau building and don't touch my stuff, but I think this one, it doesn't bother me because it's, makes sense thematically. You know, you're competing, trying to build this ecosystem and you have varying ideas of how it should happen. And it's, again, those bad things are going to happen. Somebody else is gonna be going for a goal. And it's how you, um, how you have built up your own combos down in your tableau and what you can trigger in order to react to that. And I, I love it. Yes, somebody ate my hippo one time that I needed and that cost me 14 points. Well, then guess what happened? I brought out and changed the landscape and the hippo couldn't be there. You know, it's just these cascading kind of decisions and the combos that you can set up. It's like, you know, with your different animals that you can trigger and making sure you're taking those less powerful cards that, yeah, they're easy to get and it only gives you a wild, but that means you can trigger this other card, which is going to be a real cascading. I just, I love this game. Um, I've taught it multiple times at our retreat and uh, at Dice Tower West, and I just, every time I'm just, oh, I love the game. And it's, yeah, I get it. People get in your way. Again, get better. It's fine. You said cascading like three times, and you were talking about animals. I'm pretty sure Cascadia is what you're trying to go for. No, I love Eco's First Continent. It is fantastic and I will be the champion of this game and if you like it find me at a convention I will always say yes to play and I'll teach you this is kind of your, this is kind of your broom service right, right exactly like half, like, the, half the people are just viscerally right. like oh, I don't like so it right. and the other half do yes. love it there's plenty of people that it's like this very game very lot. divisive and yeah and people mm -hmm. are like it's just bingo yeah but it's bingo that you can mitigate and again I, I love that mechanism that you're that's constant constantly that response to luck that comes out a response to other people's turns I, I'm definitely more of a tactical player over a strategic player and I think this is it 
you're setting up combos and it's all about when that tactical situation comes when it's the perfect timing to to um, trigger it and it's just oh you're just so much power <laughs> so good i love egos first well, continent my number three the world loves and the world agrees with me so my number three is the crew it is an awesome yeah. game. Great, was, great game. I was hoping wow. to not agree, but You're I like it. You're hoping not agree. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, I'm okay with Mission Deep Sea or the original one in space. The storyline does nothing for me. Does absolutely nothing. Whatever. Um, but the card play, especially the two player, I know Chris talked about this, that having the Jarvis character where you can have a little bit of information, but there's also some more hidden cards, and you're working uh, towards each other, with each other, to try to hit these goals and objectives. It is, when we got it during the pandemic, I wanted to play this every single night, and Chris was like, oh, "No, wow. let's play something else, please." <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what it is about this game, but it is, it's smooth, it's thinky, but it's the type of thinky that I can do when I'm exhausted and I don't want to play a game and I don't want to set up a game and I don't want to do all that kind of stuff. Like, this is my go-to. Like, let's play something, and then once I get into it. Like, I, I just want to play yeah. five, six scenarios because it's so exciting. It's it's such this fun push, and if I fail, I'm going to do it again. Like, we're going to we're gonna win this. Oh, yeah. We're going to make it happen. And so, ah, I love it so much. I think it's so clever, and I'm I'm excited about all of it. You said you play, y'all played through the whole first one, right? Mm -hmm. and I was, what's the longest that you spent on one scenario? Do you know? Cool. I feel like it didn't take us more than, like, three tries. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you all, okay, I guess you were playing twice Wait, with, you don't, with Jarvis. You don't start back over yeah. when you lose? Mm-mm. Well, we'll draw the tentacle. That's why we're going to get past number five. <laughs> Twenty-one's not invited to game night. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I love the crew. So that's my number three. Good one. It's fun. My number three is my highest-ranked um, Cthulhu Mythos game. This is Mansions of Madness. I have everything for Mansions of Madness. This is an app-assisted game where you're exploring a mansion. There's all sorts of different scenarios. There's tons of different ones, and they all feel slightly different as you're playing different investigators and trying to uncover the rooms, uncover the mystery, figure out what's going on. You're fighting off bad guys as they're coming at you. Sometimes it's just trying to deduce what's going on in general, like you're talking to people around the board and trying to uncover the mystery and figure out what your next objective is and complete that objective um, and I really really enjoy the puzzles in this game as well you come up with different things there are slide puzzles or mastermind puzzles or all sorts of different puzzles in the game they help you like unlock chest or be able to solve like a glyph that you find and different things like that I just enjoy the fact too that you're like getting a bunch of different items and you're trying to like utilize those like getting spells to be able to like move people around and do stuff like that it has a lot of that like Arkham Horror Files feel mm -hmm. but this is the game that just really brings that flavor and theme home um, I played this recently um, at Halloween time and we, we like turned the lights down and had like the table lit up and like had the creepy music playing through the table uh -huh. itself and like it was just really thematic so and a lot good. of fun and it's a blast to play I love playing this game and I want to play it even more I mean I played I think there's only a couple scenarios that I haven't played really? yet and there's a ton of them you should and save it for like our, our black night night mm, we'll do it. there yeah. you go Ooh. this with black night I'm reinviting also. myself oh, it's not how <laughs> yeah. reputations work I really mm -hmm. love the That's way now. that this game plays out and just the flair and the theme, the theme of it and how much it immerses you so I want to I really want to play this again because mm -hmm. I think we played the first scenario twice but like mm -hmm. a year apart yeah mm -hmm. so I, I really would like to see more yeah, there's there's a ton of different ways that it plays out, you know, and right. the different scenarios can vary very wide, wildly on like kind of what your objectives are and what you're uncovering. Yeah, so. this is this is a really good one. So there you oh, go, yeah. Mansions of Madness Second Edition. Good pick. Great pick. Love it. I don't know. <laughs> All right, but it's a blast. Two, people have been asking, where is this? Where is this pick? Where is, is it? Two? It's Could really it high, apparently. Is this the it's time? number two. If if this is the game that you're thinking it is, I have no idea. Then if stop. you're thinking that it's a Wait feast a for Odin, then it is. Oh. My number two is a feast for Odin, a massive, large worker placement game. I remember when we got this, and I thought games can't really get much bigger than this. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it sound like you're crying there. Uh, yeah, I am. But only on the inside. This game is a masterpiece. It is a worker placement game that has so many spots and so many options and yet it doesn't become too unwieldy for me. And I know for many people they won't like it, that's fine. But I think that what it does is it takes a wide array of actions and it organizes them into a 
kind of a grid, basically, mm. right? You have types of actions across, and then based on the column, it costs one, two, three, or four workers. And there's bonuses for spending three or four workers on an action, plus there's strong, there's strong actions. But there's also a lot of benefit for taking some of the smaller spots. So while it, while it has a lot going on, it is, for a Euro game, kind of the sandboxiest game out there. Mm. Do I want to became, become a trading Viking? I have to build up the right types of ships, and then these action spaces open up to me. Do I want to become more of a raiding, warring Viking, for example? Absolutely. I Everyone need to. Want that. I need to kind of develop along a different path, and then different spaces on the board open up to you there, and it's all in service of a very fun... Uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a polyomino-ish type thing where you're covering up spaces on your board and other islands, uh, or you can go the animal route, get lots of points from doing various and sundry different things. So people complain, well, it's not really truly a sandbox. It's like, well, for a Euro game, for a worker yeah. placement game, for an Uwe Rosenberg, this is... There's lots of ways to get points. Exactly. Yeah. It's so open-ended, and you don't have to touch any single path and you so, can still do great in the game. So the polyominoes that you're building up, like what does that represent? Because it's looking as like there's like a log and then like a cup that's almost right. the same size as the log and then like another And then like, a shirt. And then yeah. a shirt and then there's just rocks around. It's you know, just it's like, negative what? victory points. You're covering really? yeah, yeah. you're covering you're up negative victory point spaces points. and you're going up an income track uh, by covering up everything to the There it is. Below I assume and to it's like left. building a home. Just like real life. Like you need lots of different things when you're building a home. Like I think that that's kind of what it represents. It's it's your Viking society in general. Yeah. Even though it's a Tetris puzzle, it's just because puzzles are fun. But the Listen, idea. Kids, if you don't have pictures on your walls like in your house, you're really not hard. covering up the negative victory points. I'm really hard decorate to your house. Here. Oh, I need to decorate my house. This, the, this, the, go ahead, sorry. the Tetris part is the least thematic, oh, right? Okay. There you go. But what does it represent? I guess it represents your ability as a culture to have developed certain items and oh, cool. certain things, and the, you lay it out on this grid board. Yeah. But like, but a lot of the theme is there more in the sense of like historical theme and right. what mm. things represent. Oh, cool. uh, there, there's a whole extra book, thicker than the rule book, that's like an encyclopedia oh, of wow. why stuff is in the game, oh, really what cool. stuff represents. Yeah. It's well researched. This is one that I'm very intimidated by. You know, this is like mm. the game that's like, hi, the more you talk about, the more you tell me about it, I'm like, <laughs> I think I would like it. But like, I'm, I'm nervous about it, like I'm scared of it, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I just, ooh, it seems it, like a lot to take in. It's the arrangement of the worker placement board that makes it as accessible as it is. Not wildly accessible, uh -huh. mind you. It's still a lot of actions to choose between. But be, the way that it's arranged is intuitive. Okay. Mm. It's like a spreadsheet of worker placement actions. That You're doesn't selling help. it. No, You're so like, selling it. You like spreadsheets. I like my spreadsheets. <laughs> it's clear. It's clean. <laughs> I don't like spreadsheets the game. <laughs> That's work. That's nice, right, exactly. There you go. All right, my number two is, um, I think Z is the champion for this game. Eric Lang, it is The Others. This is one that we all others. played together, um, minus one person. You weren't there, were you? No, you were not. Uh, we played this, and, and it came up because I was telling him how much I love Betrayal of House on the Hill, you know, mm. but how flawed the game is, and I was like, I really love what it does with the traitor and how it becomes one versus many, but I really haven't found a one versus many game that I that I mm. like. He's like, ah, oh, hold on. So, so we got together one weekend, and we all played this, and I was like, oh, I love it. I mean, you guys know my taste by now. It's everything I love. It's the big, it's the baddies. They're nasty, they're gruesome. Everyone feels really powerful, you know, and and, um, but it requires a high level of cooperation. Um, one person is playing a sin who is trying to infiltrate this, I want to say human society, but there's also definitely some mutants in there as well. But anyway, trying to infiltrate, you know, so greed is trying to, to, to take over. And I love the thematic integration of whatever sin they're playing dictates their player powers. And, and you can really see that come to life with how they take their actions and what their response cards are and things like that. Everyone else is playing cooperatively, trying to complete some sort of goal. Um, and I just think it runs really smooth on both sides, which is nice. But in these, these higher player count games, one versus many, I feel like sometimes there can be that imbalance of the one is just kind of sitting there and waiting for 10 minutes, you know, but because of the turn structure mm -hmm. where 
if you're playing as the, the, the many, then you get, let's say, two turns. Um, so that, and there's four, so that, require, that means there's eight things happening, right? The one is gonna get four turns, but then they get to decide when, they, when those happen. So they're engaged the whole time because they only have half as many actions, so maybe they'll do a little bit more, but when, it's about when are they triggering those and taking those in order mm -hmm. to respond. Do they save them until the end when they can come in and wreck house, or do they kind of pick away and, and go more of a thwart, you know? I, just, I really, really love this. I think it's really interesting on both sides. It's so much fun. And um, I, I was going to say it's my favorite yeah. one versus think, many, but it's, uh, you know. I think that mechanic's really cool because as the players, it adds that anxiety yes. of like, of like, I'm going to move over here near the monsters, end of my turn. Like, right. are they going to jump me now right. or, you yeah. know. And if I do this, you and guys are going to get over there and help me, right? Like, yeah, exactly. we're cooperating. But the, but and the it's one, like, ah, right. ah. But the, but the one person's hearing that and is like, oh, you don't know I'm sitting on this juicy card, too. You know, like, it's They're just. like, oh, I'm going to try to wipe all of you out. Yes, you there's know? just, it's oh. so tense and such great decision space. And it's it's just, a, oh, my gosh, the miniatures in this are just fantastic as mm. well. Um, yeah, I, I really, really love the others. Mm. Thank you. I, uh, I can't see that. Iteration, Iteration Omega. Omega. Appreciate the super chat. Nice. Yes, I will say, I think the biggest compliment I can give to this game is that going into it, I expected it to be a big, dumb game. Yeah. Right. right. Rah, move oh, forward, oh, attack, big roll monster. dice, whatever. Right, yeah. Everything about it is really well designed. Yeah. It is the antithesis. Even though it looks like big, dumb game mm -hmm. in like all the good ways, it is, it's not in right. the bad ways. Right. Yeah, I, like, mm -hmm. I like these style games that like the decision isn't just move forward and roll dice. This has some like meaningful decisions you right. can make along the way. That's I mean, that's what sure. I look for in games is like meaningful decisions. I like games that look like big, dumb games, but you get to make meaningful decisions. That's right, you do, way. and it's tense throughout as well. You know, I, just, I love the tension of this. I love the arc of the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at different times, just like, oh, wow. The one is so overpowered, there's no way we can do this. You know, and at the end, it's like, oh no, the many are so powerful, there's nothing we can do because they have this cooperation. It's just, it has such a great Work arc and together. such great tense, tense moments throughout it that it's. Uh, I think the, like it's it. not the adrenaline mechanism, but it almost feels that way the, the idea of like, you can get stronger the the more corruption. Doing, the more corrupt you right, get or whatever. Corrupt, like, yeah. I think that's very interesting. Right, which like, that's cool. I don't typically like these games, but I, right. I did find that very fascinating. And I love that, that idea, too. It's, it's corruption, not death, right? Like, you don't die in this. You become corrupt. Like, the sin overtakes you, and then you're out of the game, you know? And, and the sin is just trying to corrupt. What, Roy? That's fantastic. It just... Part for the course, you know. You know just get in you so and just corrupt you, and you're just ah, you're on. Roy doesn't so like good. anything dark. I'm, I'm, oh. I, I like. Goodbye, light. space. He likes light, happy, <laughs> like nature games. At the very end. I anyway. love it. Yeah, All right, why number two was Chris's number two, which surprised me. I thought this was going to be lower on your list, but it's Feast for Odin. You mean more one one er more onely on my no, list? No, I just I assumed it was going to be like lower in the top ten, or maybe in your twenty. Like my number three. But four. I because mm. I feel like I like this game even more than you do, which surprises me. You're wrong. But you know, <laughs> I I adore Feast for Odin. We bought this game used in hopes of playing it once or twice, reviewing it and selling it. And then I fell in love with it, and Chris likes it too. And <laughs> just like, it's only <laughs> I'm going to downplay his number two game. No, I, I love so much about this. It is, it is sandboxy in the sense of like, you can't, you can't do everything, but you want to do so much. Go explore an island or two. You know, go build ships and go raiding, go fight, go whaling. Like, there's just so much to do. I have not explored this whole game, and I've played it so many times. I love this at two, um, but I'm very still happy to play it at four, even though it's long and it takes, you know, it takes three hours to play. Like, I, I just love so much of what's going on and so much of the decisions, it's wonderful. And then you add in the expansion, and oh my goodness, it tightens up everything that needs to be tightened up, and it just fixes things and it adds so much more. Feast for Odin is a feast. Like, it, it is a mechanical feast in a way that no other work replacement game has ever done for me. Like, I, I absolutely love that. It's so good, so good. Also, you don't, well, you feed your workers, but you always get food. And so it's not like you're starving the whole time. Mm, like this is, is there's so much abundance in this game. It's oh. not that punishing. Yes, it, I love it. You're right, it's just a feast. It's, it's a, a feast. feast of a game. So Feast for Odin, my number two. My number two is a board game based off of my favorite IP of all time, my favorite books of all time, my favorite movie series of all time. And this is Lord of the Rings, War of the Ring. 
I love War of the Ring. I love the way this game works. This is a two-player game. It takes about four hours to play, but is gigantic and epic and sprawling. And it really gives you that flavor and feel of the whole scope of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I mean, you start out in Rivendell as the Fellowship, and you're trying to get, as a Fellowship player, you're trying to get the ring to Mount Doom. Um, as the Sauron player, you're trying to either corrupt Frodo or take over enough strongholds to win the game. And it's a very asymmetrical play. You're doing different things, but you have these action dice that you're using and trying to choose exactly as a free build player, you're gonna try to consolidate your forces to try to hold on to those strongholds longer. Are you gonna try to move the fellowship? But that feels very much like pressure luckish as like how far can I move in a turn without being found by the Nazgul's or being sought out and corrupted even more. Um, it's just a the, the tug of war in this game of back and forth of trying to hold on to those strongholds, trying to keep Frodo from being corrupt and get to Mount Doom. Like every single game I play of this it wins with Frodo right there on the cracks. And, and and either A, throwing it in, or B, like strongholds being taken over and we lose the game. And it's just right there on the very edge and then Frodo will end up getting corrupt and you lose the game. Very much like how it actually happened in the books. Um, but there's also been crazy wild left turns you can take from the books. I played once against my dad where I took the fellowship through the Great Havens and took boats all the way around and, and like landed ships right beside Mordor and just walked in. And it's just, just fun the different ways you can play the game and he the just different experiences. Just walked into Mordor. No you respect. Know. No respect for Mordor. Listen, he got shot with a bunch of arrows. He's Mr. Pincushion anyway. What does he know? Um, <laughs> poor Boromir. <laughs> poor Boromir. <laughs> um, but yeah. What does he know? What does he know? <laughs> Denethor? Gondor has no king. Gondor needs no king. Anyway, um, I love Lord of the Rings. I love this game. And the feel of it just like is amazing to me. And uh, it's a blast to play. And me and Chris should play it someday. So. I would love that. Really yeah. I wow. didn't know there were more Lord of the Rings games left. Yeah. I thought they it's, were all already on this their list. Is, if there is a Lord of the Rings game, this is, this it. is it. Like This, this is, is it. it. This is the gigantic one. I've played other people's copies of the gigantic like deluxe collector's edition with a gigantic wooden book. Um, I don't think you need to own that. Like It's really expensive for what it is. This is just as good and plays just as well, and it's just as fun. So Lord of the Rings, War of the Ring, it's a blast to play. And my number one game of all time. Thank really? you, Kenny. Congrats, guys. You made it to number there one. There wasn't Kenny. Yeah. That didn't shock me as much as it no. should have. With the door no. closed, it's not it's like not here. It's, 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 it scared me way more than that before. Yeah. I was more, like, my, my anxiety was already ready because Wendy crawling over the table. I know. <laughs> Wendy, like, jumping on the table. I, I tried prepared. to make a number one I was here. already prepared for insanity. Can't, can't quite see it, but that's what it is. Cool. Did not our Kickstarter fund? What just happened? Yeah, right. Something like that. Made number one! We made number, number one! <laughs> My number one game. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Before this happens, mm -hmm. do we have the same number one game? Yeah, absolutely, of right? Course. So of course. I'm going to not... I was not... surprised by the same number no two. One. I spoke at length about my number two game, Feast Run, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just briefly say my number one game is Brass Birmingham. This is... An amazing game. It'd be hilarious if it wasn't Wendy's. I <laughs> just didn't put it on the list. Yeah, she's like, oh. <laughs> it supersedes my list. Burr, 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 burr. It, it is. It's so good. I love this redevelopment of of the original brass. I love that it looks beautiful. Mm, See, that I can be. I can be a little bit shallow. Amazing. Wendy took the picture, but like the game looks gorgeous, especially when you compare it to the PP Yellow original board and the, just the awful production that it had. But, uh, Maybe that's very dark. I'm trying to see. Okay, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it is a dark game. This is even the bright side of the board. But okay. I, I'm i going to let Wendy talk more at length about it. So I'll just say that it's my number one game of all time. I, I'm is always it? hankering to play it. Number one. Number one. Mm. You've told me about this game for a long time. I do not think that you would I love it. Like it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you, you talked about it less and less over the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Wait All your right. turn. I'm gonna skip Camille's okay. turn. All right, Roy, do you wanna? Okay. All right, my number one is going to be a surprise to absolutely nobody. I'm sorry, there is no oh. intrigue or mystery behind my number one. It is Spirit Island. I love this game so much. If you took my number two and my number three and they had a love child, it would be number one because it is nature and it is you are what. Why are you confused? I'm trying to remember what your two or three were. Oh, the, the others, others and, and Ecos. I was like, there's a lot of oh. nature. And, but then, yeah, the corruption and, like, the bad guys coming in. And if you took, like, Catan and 
flipped it over, right? So in this one, you are actually the spirits of the island, and there are their invaders, it's people, they're coming in, and how there are, do what? I said, how could they? The yeah, they're coming in, and, and they're blighting and not taking care of the land, and so you're the spirits of the land, and trying to, to scare them off and give them bad nightmares and cause fear and also kill them. I love it. I love the asymmetry in this game. Every character is completely different in how they play and the strategy behind them. Um, I love the stories of this. I, again, you know, I'm huge for that thematic integration. I love that if you look at the card, the card titles are hilarious, first of all. And then as you read actually what they do, you're like, oh, it makes sense, you know, because I got in their mind and gave them this nightmare about a time, you know, oh, it's so good. It's just, it's so many great stories and you just see it coming to life and you get to kill things and you get to drown them or you get to set the, the world on fire in order to burn them. I set the um, world on and depending on what your depending what your different by. asymmetrical you done okay well during the different <laughs> asymmetrical powers and so that um, it's just again it's that thematicness and it's it's you can grow your spirit and you know I like that as well kind of that that power that you feel really weak in the beginning but you have that decision of do I go up my energy so I can do more cards or so I can afford better cards or do I just go up my my card play track so I can take more actions it's that you really have to have a good balance I, I, the first time I played Gloomhaven. Jaws the Lion. My first thought was like, I love this card play because it reminds me so much of Spirit Island. You know, there's I think there's a lot of really interesting decisions when to play what and how to combo them together. And I could talk for another 45 minutes about this game. I believe you have not taken a breath I, oh. since you started. <laughs> I love it so much. It makes me so happy. I love playing with the different spirits and it is fantastic. I really, really like this game. It's not my number one. No Camilla surprised. likes giving people Are nightmares. Done, yes? All right. I'm now done. Okay. Love Child of the That's Others so and Ecos. Yes. Print is that on the box. Island? Yes, it is. Mm. Right? Yes. Fantastic. All right, well, my number one is um, Taco Cat. Taco Cat Goat Cheese. Yep, no, no, it's definitely brass. It's definitely brass. In every way, shape, or form, I have loved this game oh, so for so long. Actually, so I played the original Lancashire Brash back when it was ugly and beige and weird colors and I didn't like it. Oh wow. And then when Birmingham came out Chris had to convince me that we were going to back this for Kickstarter um, mm. because I was not convinced that I was going to like it. And then the things that they changed when they added in the beer mechanism and they they changed up like the the distant trade route kind of stuff and they, they just tightened it up it, it just became this beautiful, amazing, wonderfulness of awesome economic building. Like, it looks gritty, it looks dark, it's very beautiful in that regard. Um, but then the, the economics and the flow of all of this, there's so much positive interaction. So what you're doing is you're connecting cities and you're trying to connect kind of businesses and stuff together and you're building buildings so you can eventually ship things like mm. you want to ship crates or you want to ship cotton those kind of things to earn money but it's so interactive and there's so many different strategies and choices that you can make so maybe i don't want to go heavy into shipping things that's okay because i can build coal factories and i can build steel factories and i get lots of points for other people using my coal and my steel also, if uh, the way that the market, the supply and the demand of the market works is if people don't have coal and steel on the board, then in the market, they start having to pay money for it across the market. It's not just free. They can't just pick it up. And so that market gets really expensive. And then I come in and I'm like, ha, here's five coal cubes. My building gets to instantly score, which is awesome. And then I also get paid for all that coal that I'm filling up in the market for all that cost. Oh, it's wonderful. There's so much interaction. I'm not... I'm hit or miss with loans in games, but the way the loans work in this game is beautiful. There are games where I am poor almost the whole time, and I never really get a good income, and I'm always taking out loans, and I'm just barely paying them back, and I win. And then there's games where I get this huge income, and I'm feeling rich every round, mm -hmm. and I win. Like, I just, I love, ah, I love so much about this. It's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. This and Beast for Odin, I try to play at every convention that I possibly can because they're heavy games. I don't always have time for them, but I love them with all of my heart. And what you I, may now speak. I think what makes these two games particularly high on our list is that they're extremely good two-player heavy mm -hmm. Euros, which mm -hmm. is a, a genre that obviously speaks to us, but the fact that it is as interactive and is as meaningful uh, to work on and build off of each other in only a two-player game, mm -hmm. as opposed to, I think, the original Brass, it needed that three or four players to kind of be able to bounce off of each other's mm, interesting. Uh, mercantile activities or whatever you want to call yeah. it. 
Brass Birmingham is a huge improvement, for, especially for the two-player crowd. Yeah, I have no I desire it. to play Lancashire again. Like, it, oh, wow. it is unnecessary in my book. Oh. Yeah. So that is, that's it. Brass yeah, number one. Ooh. My number one is a space game with a rotate. No, um, my number one is the same, <laughs> the same game as it was last year. This is Marvel Champions. I love, love, love Marvel Champions. I love the Marvel theme. Um, when I first played this game, it took a little while to grow on me, just because like I was used to playing Arkham Horror. I was used to all the story and stuff like that. But then the simplicity of this game and the way you can just easily throw a character down and immediately yeah, start fighting so a bad accessible. guy. Like you don't have to have like barely any setup in this game at all to just immediately get into the action. I have everything that's out for this game so far. Um, Nova and Ironheart are coming out on Friday. I'm going to try to figure out if I can get one from a local game store or something like that. Um, I love that. <laughs> they just announced X-Men for this game I today. Know, you showed me. So oh, you and Genesis, so where you have Colossus and Kitty Pride, and then Magneto, Magneto and you're fighting uh -huh. off Sentinels and Master Mode, and you yes. have Professor X in there. I love Marvel, and this game lets you play with those Marvel characters with these cool decks and this interesting like hand management of like discard cards to play out other cards and comboing and working together. I played this game a ton with my girlfriend, which has just elevated it even more from last year that I can actually play this not solo. Like, And I've really enjoyed playing this. I play at a ton of conventions. People are always coming up and asking me to play Marvel Champions. And I'm like, I'm down. Let's do it. Right. Uh, to be honest, you really need to play this either solo or two players. Two, yeah. Three players is a really long game. You should not play four players right. I've at I've all. Four players <laughs> once and... Um... And if you're yeah. going to do that, they do have like a skirmish mode where you like make it where you only play one phase of the bad guy. Mm. You're going to win, but yeah, but yes. but you can still have fun like playing with the decks a little bit. But I definitely keep it at a lower player count. They've come out with a lots of campaign boxes. I've been playing through the um, Sinister Motives ones as well, and that's been a ton of fun just playing against so many different villains, so many different heroes. And I buy them as immediately as I see them. You know, I, I love this game. It's kind of a cheat to have a game that expands almost every single month. Like, it makes it easier right. to push up my list because I'm just always playing something right. new for it. So, yeah. is this really the same game as the core box? Would just the core box be this high? I don't know. I have all of it. I love it. So, right. who cares if it's just the core box? I, mean, I know. Yeah, this I is. I had just the core box for a really long time. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think how long, like, just until pretty yeah. recently that that's, I've had just the core box. I, I think maybe one or two other. Well, other if you ever ones, get stuck on a desert island, you'll have shelter because you have enough boxes. Oh, uh, yeah. My my <laughs> entire bathroom is just Marvel themed and, like, I have all of my Marvel champion stuff in there. It's just, I've, I've uh, never seen a Captain America toilet before. It was awesome. It's, Oh, I, I've I never been to the bathroom in your America house. Like lid. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Does yeah. it I was like, I've been in the downstairs bathroom. That, the, it, now it is very oh, Marvel okay. themed. I, I don't know how long it's been house. since you've been there, but oh, it is, man. it's disgustingly Marvel. <laughs> 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 but I can get away with it. So um, I love not it. Not just disgusting though. That would. We used to have a Mario clean, bathroom. Yeah. It's clean. Yeah, disgustingly Marvel. Yes. Anyway, Marvel Champions, my number one game of all time. So I love it. Oh, good. Mm. Yeah, very nice. Oh, we made Thank it. you for the super chat, Malik. Appreciate that. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely awesome. Thank you. That was so much fun. We should talk and play our favorite games more often. That oh, is what doing this list should. taught me. Is that yeah. like, I feel like I play a lot of games, but not enough. You know, like yeah. I want to play my favorite games. And I want to play oh. some of the games that y'all are so passionate about. Like I want yeah. to finally get Twilight Imperium Fourth yeah. played and and and. Uh -huh. Wrap my head around it more and get a better opinion on it. Mm. I will happily teach you Feast Road any time if you feel like taking on something big and crunchy and open like that. I need to. I need to. I need to be a big girl. <laughs> okay, but don't do, do it without me, okay? Don't do it without me. All right. Well, he said it's best too. Mm. Still like yeah. And you said you want to play Spirit Island again. And I'm always down mm -hmm. for that. I definitely want. 100%. I definitely want to try that again. Oh my gosh! Oh, for real. Any of them? Pretty much anything on my top 100, I will always, always say yes to. It's been a blast. Yeah. Let's just so not great. sleep for the next week and just play games all night. Done. Yeah. Okay. See, no problem. I'm gonna sleep for like a week after this. <laughs> 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 all right. I don't know. Why I can look at my list. Finished. Trash. Finished. Yeah. All right. Trash. Thanks so much for joining us for this last top 100 for the A team. We appreciate all your support, all your love, all your comments, everything. Keep commenting below and all that jazz. And I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Camilla Cleghorn. I'm Chris Yee. And I'm Roy Canning. Have fun playing all the games and not sleeping. All of our games. Oh. Telling us how great they are. Yeah.